In the spirit of reconciliation, the entire team at Curious Freedom acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connection to land, waters and community. We acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. It always was and always will be Aboriginal land. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people listening today. I would like to acknowledge in particular the Darug people who are the original custodians on the land on which I record this podcast. Thank you for showing us what curious freedom can look like. Hello and welcome to Curious Freedom Podcast with me, Kirsty Fruja, and friends. And today I want to call out the nepotism straight away. I've got my baby brother on the podcast today because he is an insurance expert. So welcome, Phil. Thanks for having me, sis. <laughs> So today I thought that I would get you on the podcast because I am really curious about life insurance and the freedom that comes from having insurances in place. And no, I don't know anybody more qualified or more fun to have on the podcast than you, my dear little brother. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm not that little anymore, but um, <laughs> but and no longer a baby. I haven't been for a long time. You're still my baby. Don't you? I call my kids like <laughs> Oliver's almost 14. And I'm like, hey, baby boy, how are you today? <laughs> so, well, our, yeah, our Harper's our little one and she'll always be our little one for sure. Yeah. But you were right. You were no longer little. <laughs> you were very, I want to oh. say mature, but you're no, <laughs> far no, from not. mature. <laughs> You are mature and wise in business though. And so tell us about yourself, tell us about your family, tell us about your business, and then we'll get stuck into learning about insurance today. Yeah. So I run a business called Sky Wealth. We just do insurance. So we're financial advisors and we just help people set up insurance. So look at whatever they've currently got, determine if that's enough or if they need some more insurance. And then we help set up insurance. So, you know, if people need help with like looking at super or investments or retirement planning, anything else, that's not what we do. We just specialize in insurance. And so my personal life, I'm the father of three beautiful girls, um, definitely your favorite nieces. They you know, are you've got some eight. of my nieces and they... Definitely your favorite. <laughs> um, and an amazing wife. And, you know, our eldest is 11, our youngest is eight. Hey, yeah. Our eldest is almost 12. Yes. Uh, and one exactly one month younger than Amy. Uh, yeah, that's a bit about me. Tell us what's happening in the next couple of days for you guys. So we are heading off to the Philippines. So we're going to, we've, we've been planning this for five years almost. Um, <laughs> 2000, end of 2018, started 2019, me and Kate sat down and said, oh, we've got to live abroad. That was one of the big drivers for starting a business. And you know, starting in financial advice was the ability to work with clients remotely and we wanted to live overseas but hadn't done it for the first, you know, seven, eight years of business. So we made a call, we'll do it, we'll start planning for it. All my meetings were remote and, and still are today from 2019 onwards and then COVID hit. So we were planning on going six months overseas but just delayed our process and now we're doing three months in the Philippines because our, I mean, our girls had two years of at home schooling because we live in Melbourne. So um, <laughs> we thought six months away from school on top of what they've, they've had uh, over the last kind of few years was probably a bit too much. So we're just doing term two uh, in the Philippines, which we're really excited to. We just hang out, hang out as a family. And, you know, the girls will kind of, and, and me and Kate will appreciate kind of the privilege that we have in Australia and we'll see kind of how 99% of the world live. And so, yeah, we're going to, we're living on a beach in a kind of a small town outside of, you know, four hours outside of one of the major cities in the Philippines. So it kind of feels funny that you go, oh, we want to see how the rest of the world live and we're going to live on a beach. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not a resort. It's not yeah. a resort. That's why I wanted you to qualify. Please December. qualify. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, it's an amazing spot. Like there's there's like sardines and turtles. Like you literally just go into the beach and you can see turtles, which will be amazing. But 
yeah, it's not a resort town. We've got our own house there that's a mansion for that space, but it's going to be a bit of a culture shock for the girls, which I'm excited for. Yeah, and you and Kate have done a lot of travelling before you had children. So, mm. And whilst you have had children, well, you've yeah. done loads of travelling. So I'm excited yeah, very fortunate. for you all. I'm so excited. Okay, so let's talk insurance. So most listeners who have been listening to me for a while <laughs> may recall that I used to be a financial planner too before I became a declutter coach. And you have been in doing this business for how long now? Have you been in? Uh, like 11 years now I've had the business. So a long, a long time. So it's been, it's been a while. And I followed in your footsteps, Kirsty. Um, I wanted to be exactly like you. So maybe the next business will be decluttering. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, I don't, think, I don't have enough empathy for that. <laughs> You are full of empathy, my friend. You are full of empathy, particularly for people who find themselves without insurance is yeah. how how your empathy comes out. So you had a great segue into how we can talk about this with how can people find clarity because that's one of our taglines, clutter to clarity. So we really want to help people to get clarity around their insurances. So tell us more about that. Yeah. So, I mean, like insurance is one of these things that everyone, I mean, just like, just like money, um, everyone needs to deal with on a daily basis, but very few actually fully understand. And, and that's kind of why I got into financial advice because I'm passionate about helping people, you know, get, get clarity around stuff. Now, financial advice has evolved and changed, but insurance is the one area where we can still help kind of the everyday Australian get clarity on exactly what they've got. Cause most people, you know, it's not really something that we think about. You know, we've got a she'll be right attitude in Australia where we don't think anything bad's going to happen um, or we think, oh, well, well, we'll get support from family or friends or often we think that, you know, our superannuation will have insurance, which is true. You know, one of the great things about Australia is super funds are, you know, they, they do have to have a requirement of considering insurance for their members, but most people just underappreciate and don't spend enough time on it. So when we talk about the insurance just to kind of frame it, we're talking about like life insurance, so um, money that gets paid out to your dependents when you pass away. Uh, the other one is disability insurance. So if you could never return to work again, there's a lump sum payment that gets paid out to you. The third one is income protection, which covers a monthly benefit. So if you can't work for a short period of time or a long period of time, you just get paid on a monthly basis. And then there's trauma insurance or critical illness which is a lump sum payment similar to disability, but it's very specific case by case. So, you know, if you have cancer, you get paid out a lump sum payment. If you have a heart attack, you get paid out a lump sum payment, but it won't pay out if you if you hurt your back or for things like mental health, which TPD or total permanent disability and income protection can cover for things like mental health. And then there's child's cover. So if, if your little ones, something significant happens to them, you can get paid out a lump sum for them. So, that's kind of the insurances that we do and, and we help people set up. But in terms of like thinking about like where you've got it, for, for anyone out there, like definitely go to your super fund first if you're unsure if you've ever set anything up because your super fund may have something. Now, one of the, the downsides is it's, it's generally very small levels of cover. Most super funds, they've got an awkward kind of balancing act, making sure they're not eroding super balances as well as making sure they're adequately insured. Now, the ASIC came out last week, I'm getting a bit deep, but ASIC came out last week telling super funds that they're not adequately insuring their members and, and they need to actually review how much cover they, they're covering. So most people have got, you know, $150,000 of life and TBD, which I know for me, like, you know, Kate would be stuffed if that's all we had. I know for you guys, you, you know, Simon or you would be stuffed if that's what, what you had. And, and that's what most, most Australians have. And that's where it's just important to consider, okay, what do we actually need? If, if I could never return to work, like how much money is enough for that? And you can get a combination of income protection and disability to, to cover that gap. And you just got to balance that, you know, the need to pay the premiums. So we, we've got to fund this premium, you know, how much is actually enough and, and striking that right balance between those two things. Yeah, because it can be an easy thing to be cut from the budget when mm -hmm. things are getting tight. You know, when we're in a tricky economic climate here in Australia at the moment, and hopefully the interest rates don't go up today, so everybody can know when we're recording this episode. Yeah. <laughs> but 
that's what's been happening for the last 11 months <laughs> is that interest rates are mm. rising. So it can be really tricky for people to be thinking long term and thinking yeah. of their future self rather than their present self when looking at their budget and what can be cut from their budget. And I mean, just, just touching on that, one of the great things about insurance is it's not an all or nothing scenario. Like I've, we, you know, well, I've had many, many phone calls recently talking about, you know, budget constraints. Oh, well, this is getting difficult to afford. How do we, how do we manage this? I want to cancel these policies. And we just encourage our clients to think about, okay, again, at the end of the day, you're an adult, you can make an informed decision. You can cancel these policies if you want to. However, we can dial down a level of cover to halve the cost. So you don't need to go all or nothing with these premiums. And the other thing to note is with a lot of these covers, your super fund can fund a lot of the premiums and that can be really beneficial whereby, you know, year on year, you're not feeling that pinch of that premium, but you've got to balance that with a long-term impact on your retirement savings. But if you've got like a young family, you know, a big mortgage, then, you know, even though interest rates increasing is making it tighter, well, if you can't work, it's going to be even you know more significant. So it's like these times where you start questioning the premiums is actually more important than it ever was. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about the actual different types of cover that you can get? Yeah. So I touched on them briefly. So life insurance, which is yeah death cover. So if you if you pass away, that gets paid out. Disability is if you can never return to work. So total permanent disability. Income protection, there's a, there's a little bit of nuance with the income protection payment. So there's the amount that you get paid out, which is on, on a monthly basis. So like, you know, HESTA, their default amount is $1,000 a month of income protection benefit. You know, a lot of super funds will have, you know, maybe a little bit higher, but it'll kick in after 90 days. So you've got to wait 90 days before your payments will begin. And so you've got to be able to fund that first 90 days and then your income protection will come after that. And then there's also a benefit period. So how long will you get paid for? So income protection will either last for only two years and that's majority of cover if, if it's only set up through the super fund. It'll only cover for two years. If you're disabled longer than that, then the insurance company are going to stop the payments regardless. But you can also have a benefit period till age 65. So you can get paid every single month if you can't ever work again until age 65. Now, I'm a big believer on having a long benefit period even though most people don't claim beyond two years, the majority of the money that insurance companies pay out actually goes towards those long-term claimants. And that's where it's just a matter of balancing that. You know, what risk are you wanting to take on versus the, the premium you're wanting to pay? And then trauma. Trauma is one that, you know, a lot of people don't think about because the super fund can't set that up for you. They, they're not allowed to have whole trauma policies, but it's actually the most claimed on outside of income protection. So, Things like cancer, 50% of trauma claims for females is for cancer, you know, heart attacks, strokes, MS, you know, severe burns. There's like 40 odd conditions that it'll pay out on and you can get partial payments as well. So trauma is the, the policy that we claim on it for our clients more than anything else. We, I mean, again, income protection comes into that as well because people can't work. We had a client who was 32 at the time, just claimed on breast cancer and it was like four months after we set up the policies. And so she got paid out like over $200,000. And it just, I mean, for her, she was, you know, single, came to Australia from New Zealand. So she didn't have support networks here. And just that money allowed her to take time off work or just decide when she wanted to work because she, she actually did decide to do some work because she was a radiologist and she just wanted her life to kind of feel a bit normal during those times. But she was able to fly her parents from New Zealand to Australia and also having the money they weren't living on top of each other. She actually, you know, paid for an Airbnb for her parents to live nearby because, you know, she's 32 years 32. old, doesn't want to live with her family <laughs> again, um, but wants the support, but don't, don't want to live on top of each other. So it just allowed her that, that ability and, and, you know, and the freedom, as, as you say, to, to be able to pay for those things, which is like, you know, super important when the worst things kind of, you know, the, the most difficult time in your life is during these events and having the insurance payout and in the bank account just allows that freedom to, to you know, use that money for, for those purposes. Yeah. So can you talk to us more about what freedom looks like? Give us some more stories. Yeah. So, I mean, like my, um, one of my best mates actually just 
Uh, he works for an insurance company, but he's a client of ours and he's a really good friend of mine. He called me up at the start of the year on the Friday and I knew he started work back on Monday. And I picked up the phone and yelled at him, like, what are you doing? Don't you know, you start on Monday. You, you're still meant to be on holidays, just hang out with your family. And he just, he was like, oh, it's actually a personal call. Of, I think I've got pancreatic cancer. Um, and so he was basically one of the first calls he had after the doctor because we're, we're really good friends, but also because he knew that we could start a, a claim on his policy. And so he's, you know, got two boys, similar ages of, of our girls, and his wife isn't working at the moment. She's at home. And so for them, just having, I think, I, have to, I think it was like $219,000. So it was income protection for six months that automatically got paid out as well as a trauma claim. It was, it was a bit more. It was about $240,000 that just got paid out. And really what that meant, he was working full-time in a corporate role, earning good money, and he's, he's not working. And he's like, we're in April now. So he's, he's gone through chemo. He's today, actually, he's going through his sixth round of chemo. And he thinks he may need to go through another six rounds because they'll do, after the first six rounds, they'll do more tests. They'll, they'll kind of assess where, where it's at because it's pancreatic cancer. It's kind of, if it's cancer, you're going to get, you don't want to get that one. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, he's, you know, now he's thinking about, you know, the, the freedom of the money in the bank account means that he can just, basically he's thinking about like changing his whole, like, you know, life after cancer and going, he wants to be a speaker now and he wants to kind of do more. And, and so he may go back to work two days a week when he has recovered so the trauma payments are once off, that's in the bank account, there's no more money there. But income protection will pay out a monthly benefit and it will cover the difference between what his monthly benefit is and whatever he's earning. So if he can only work part-time for a long period of time, the income protection will pay the gap. So that just allows him the freedom to you know, get back to work on his terms and not just because of financial constraint. We've got another client who's really young, um, 28, I think, who had COVID and then just had like chronic fatigue symptoms and, and basically long COVID. Okay. And so Jan last year is when it started. So more than talking 15 months of long COVID and she's gone on full income protection claim and then so part income protection claim. And for her, the, what the freedom is, is just she just listens to her body. If she can't work because of fatigue symptoms, then she stops working because she knows there is a backstop there with that insurance policy. And she's still on claim and she's still, you know, the insurance company have been great working with her. There was no issues claiming on long COVID because the doctor signed off saying she can't work full time. And it's kind of, you know, chronic fatigue type symptoms. And for her, just even just mentally has been a huge impact in her life to go, like, I know I don't need to push myself and make it even worse yeah. because I've got, I've got this insurance in place. So awesome. Tell us more. Give us more stories. There's heaps. Like we, you know, there's, again, like mental health is one of the big claims these days. Like mental health is kind of a huge impact in our society these days. And, and a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, maybe insurance won't pay out on mental health, but, but statistically it's the most claimed on. And so that's an area where insurers, when you're setting up policies, they may exclude if you've got a um, previous history of a mental health condition. But if you've got a policy and you're claiming on mental health, a lot of people think it may be really difficult, but it is the most claimed on. And again, like when you're out of work because of a mental health condition, you know, in insurance world, they talk about like concurrent kind of issues. And so having a mental health condition and not being able to work with that financial kind of pressure that yeah. builds just makes everything so much worse. And so for people who are, who are on claim for mental health with that money in the bank, so this isn't our client, but this is a really good friend of mine, an advisor who is a claims advocate. And the insurance companies have been great in that space because they really want to encourage people to get off claim. You know, yes, it saves them money and, and they, that, that's their aim, but it's also just about how do we facilitate this, you know, claimant to uh, improve and, and to get better and to reskill. And so like this insurance company paying for this client to go to Harvard business school just to, to upskill and and just that support that insurers are, are providing you know people who are on claim is really important and you know a lot of people think 
especially where we hear stuff about like floods and, you know, insurance companies not paying out for floods and because you're on floodplains and all this stuff. And that's an issue. But under the life insurance contract, there's claim statistics and claims that I think around 95% of all income protection claims are paid out. 98% of all life insurance claims are paid out. So the idea in our society that where insurance companies don't pay out is, is actually just not true when it comes to life insurance. I mean, it's not true collectively, really. Most, most insurance companies pay out. But when it comes to life insurance, it's all public data. We can see it on Money Smart website, exactly what percentage of claims are paid out for each individual insurer. So yeah, mental health condition lumped with that financial stress just makes everything compounding worse. But having an insurance policy be able to give you that freedom to go, okay, I don't have that financial stress. I can kind of recover on my terms and, and work through you know, what I need to work through and get back to work if and when I'm ready is really, really important. So if somebody wants to work with you or um, have you support them, how can they go about doing that? Yeah, so we, I mean, our process is fairly straightforward. Like, you know, we, we are financial advisors and financial advising is kind of like saying we're a consultant. There's like many, many different shades of, of gray when it comes to financial advisors. So we only do insurance. So that's kind of one thing that people need to be aware of that we're not going to review their super fund and say, oh, you know, ABC super fund's no good, let's move to XYZ. But we will look at any insurance through their existing super fund or any insurance that they've got. So what we do is we just have a 15-minute phone call so people can just reach out to our website, sky, S-K-Y-E dot com dot A-U forward slash get dash started maybe. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, I put a link. we'll put a link in the okay, show notes. Cool. It's um, fine. <laughs> so, somewhere. Go on our website somewhere and just book a phone call with one of the advisors in the team. And then what we do is we just articulate what we do and, and how we work. And then from that phone call, if you want us to help, we charge a fee to review insurances. And so our fee is at the moment $330 for individuals and $495 for couples to go through our process. And it's not just a, a quote we get online. That's the easy bit. That's I wish that was all we did. Um, <laughs> but we from from that fee, we get people to fill in a massive online form. And it's, it's like a million questions. It's really horrendous to fill in, but it's really, really important that we get all that info. You meant to be we'll- selling yourself, not... <laughs> No, 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 no. We, we, trust me, insu- this type of insurance is painful to get done properly, but it's really important to get done properly. So don't ever go to an insurance company who doesn't ask medicals because they will ask at claim time. So that's why we do so much investigation, so much work up front to make sure that every policy we put in place, we're really confident if and when you need to claim, then, then you'll get paid out. Um, at the end of the day, I'm not the insurance company, but we just want to put people in the best possible place And so we ask a million questions about health because health is a really big impact or your health history is a really big impact on the policies um, because, you know, uh, insurance companies, they want to know each individual person who is applying for them and their health history because they may want to put exclusions or they may even decline the cover. So we try and get this information up front. We do a whole bunch of research to try and partner our clients with the right insurance contract and then we make a recommendation. So we just basically say, this is how much the level of cover, so the numbers, how much cover we think people need. Next, we talk about if we expect any exclusions or loadings or declining of cover, and if so, why Like, why do we expect that? Uh, and then the last thing is the cost. So here's how much it costs from your super fund. Here's how much it costs from your bank account. And then we do that by a Zoom meeting. And in that meeting, we just talk about, okay, are you comfortable with those premiums? Do you want to you know, increase the cover if you want to? You know, We can do that. Or if it's too expensive, and you're concerned about those costs, okay, we'll walk you through what are the areas in which you may want to, you know, dial this down or turn this off or reduce this to, to kind of strike that balance that people are comfortable with. And then we help with the whole application process, which is, the, you know, a huge amount of work and a pain in the neck applying for insurance cover. <laughs> it's not, I mean, I'd, I've, I've gotten home and contents insurance through Honey and that took five minutes. Personal insurance takes about five years uh, to get set up properly. <laughs> No, it's not five years, but it feels like that sometimes. Just in case you didn't realise that we were brother and sister, we have we share the very same cheeky gene and the very same, um, we are full of sass and cheek here in this family. So <laughs> it won't actually take you five years. No, it doesn't take five years, but it's, it's, it is a process and, it's, and, and as I said, it's something that we take really seriously. We want to make sure we get the right solution for everyone. And it's not just a quick quote online. 
So the reason I say it is because that's most people's experience with insurance is I get a quote online for my car insurance, I can apply because car insurance is simple. What's the make, the model, where do you live? They're the really variables when it comes to insurance. When you're covering human beings, the variables are kind of infinite and that's what the insurance companies want to know. So that is the difficulty in in what we do is we're insuring, you know, special little butterflies, which are called human beings. (laughs) And so the insurer wants to know. You know, how special are you? Are you are you a little bit, you know, is your wing a little bit broken? Okay, we've got to, we've got to account for that. <laughs> and then you're there to help people at claims time too, aren't you? Correct, yeah, and that is exactly what we want to be doing. We want to help people, you know, and uh, advocate for them at the time of claim and make sure, yeah, that they're getting paid out exactly what they're paying for. Awesome. So, again, we'll link to the website in the show notes, but it is sky.com.au and sky is spelt with an E at the end of it, just like... S-K-Y-E. Yeah, S-K-Y-E, which tell us about why, how you came up with that name, Phil. <laughs> Did you give, you the, give you the tame version or the, or the Phil version? Which one? <laughs> the Phil version. Okay. <laughs> right. I, named, I named it after our dead sister. Um, <laughs> So, so our baby little sister, which I never met, I was I wasn't fortunate enough to meet um, Genevieve Sky, and Kirsty still cries about her today, um, and, and is now. Um, and so she was she was the third in our family, the third of six, and I was number six. So yeah, we we named it, and and one of the, the reasons we named it after Sky is because you know the way our family is when it comes to death and it comes to you know talking about death we're very uh, irreverent i guess is is the word that you would use um and so and that's kind of something that we're not irreverent in our business but we don't take ourselves too serious we know that the work we do is extremely important extremely serious but the way in which we do it we don't wear suit and tie we don't need to yeah we don't take ourselves seriously even though the work we do is really serious and that's kind of you know, why we named it after Sky is because, you know, death happens and, and it's important to make sure we're kind of protecting it. And, you know, it, it is a huge impact in, in families if, if there is a loss or if there is a, an illness. And so that's why we named it after our dead sister. <sighs> I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> sorry. And then not sorry because I did. It was my choice to bring Phil on to talk about yeah. this very serious topic. I named my daughter after our dead sister as well. So did I. So, yeah. um, Phil's daughter's um, middle name is Genevieve after our sister Genevieve Sky, and my daughter's middle name is Sky. So we do honour our sister in that we way. We do. And I taught my I taught my daughter to tell her friends anytime anyone asks her why her middle name is that, and she doesn't do it. She doesn't do it. She <laughs> she always says my Harvey. late auntie. Oh, it's so disappointing. disappointing. Yeah. The other reason, and I forgot to say this at the start, the reason that I thought about you so much this week is because I've had quite a few people in my life die, Mm. not close to me, but just in that next, you know, acquaintances who I have found out that their partners have died or somebody that I grew up with has died as well. And so it just made me think, oh, so taboo to speak about death in our society and particularly here in Australia where we are known for our cheek. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's also, I mean, there's two things that people don't talk about. They don't talk about money and yeah. they don't talk about death. So when something happens, like in our Scouts group, our girls' Scouts group, one of the families, the father passed away. He had a heart attack in his car and just passed away. It was like a horrendous story. And for me, my thought is I hope he has insurance. Yeah. Because they've got a, a young family. I think the girls are a little bit older than our girls, but but in in the scouts group, and they don't have a dad anymore. Like mm-hmm. you know, and their mum doesn't have a partner anymore, and their mum has to be the sole income earner now. And like all of these things that you just like, we don't talk about money. So when when tragedies happen, no one asks. Well, how are you managing it financially? Did you have insurance? Because that's just you don't ask that. Of course you don't ask that because it's really rude to ask it. <laughs> But it's really important. Yeah, I mean, as you said, these things happen. It's like kind of really devastating that these things happen. And when, you know, I had one of my really close mates who's got pancreatic cancer, I, I walked his wife through the policies that he has. And we had a conversation, a really frank conversation about, okay, if he does pass away, well, here's the next payment. There is a life insurance policy that that pays out X amount. And I don't I don't think it's enough. I mean, the, the payment that, that they'll get is nowhere near enough because 
if it does happen, they'll have to think about how does, you know, how does she go back to work um, after a certain period of time because she's going to be the sole income earner soon and that life insurance policy is, is never really enough and so she's not going to just retire and be fine or work from home. So she's got to look at other alternatives to, to source income. So, yeah, you're right. People just don't talk about it. And here in Australia, we often think that our super will just be enough. Like I've got 80 grand in my super because I took so much time out of work raising my children and now I'm running my own small business. Like Mm. 80 grand is not, that's going to get them nothing. (laughs) Like that's barely going to make a dent in anything. So super is not enough. And and another thing I get, a massive high horse. Every time anyone ever says, oh, well, like I'm not working, so, you know, I don't need insurance. And I just like, I just want to strangle people sometimes. I'm like, like Kate went to Morocco last year. Amazing. She got to go with one of her best, best friends. And I was running the household and, and it was like, we had a running joke about all the dad fails. Like, so day one, Harper didn't go to school with lunch. <laughs> And so the teacher called me up, like, ah, Harper doesn't have lunch. Um, so I was like, okay, yeah, it's sitting on the, you know, actually I didn't even make it. I, like it completely forgot because she yeah. wanted saladas or something. Anyway, so I had to run that. And like it was, we we just had this running joke, you know, with the girls about all the dad fails that I did. And it's like, it's chaos. And so pe- when people say, well, I'm not working, I'm not earning an income, so I don't need insurance. I always say, well, go on a holiday for two weeks and see how your partner thinks when with you not around, like, you know, if you're a stay-at-home parent, like you'd need insurance as well because if, if you're dead, your partner's stuffed. <laughs> yes, amen. <laughs> like, and, you know, and this is part of yours and your advisor's roles is to go, well, what, what does life look like, you know, mm. if one of you gets sick, if one of you is injured, if one of you does pass away, what does that look like and what are the impacts? Because that's what you know, Simon and I did when the kids were younger and we had insurance out on me because we were like, well, Simon's going to have to pay for a nanny to come in and mm. help when the kids are really little, you know, and then what about psychology? What about therapy, counselling? How are you going to actually process this horrendous thing that has happened to you? You know, mm. it's not just about, hey, I've got cancer, let's go on a holiday to Disneyland. Like, yeah. although that could be one of the things. <laughs> I was talking to a good friend of mine. And she, she runs a podcast. She's on the money, but she just interviewed a guest and she's totally disabled. She went to Bali with her mom and dived into a swimming pool and, and became a quadriplegic. And just the flight from Bali to Australia was $300,000. And years and years later today, she spends $83,000 just going to the toilet every year because she needs equipment, the bags. Yeah. Whatever that is. And that's a dollar fifty a bag. A dollar fifty every time you need to go to the toilet for a whole year costs eighty three thousand dollars. And that's just an astronomical figure that you just kind of go, Oh wow, like how how do they fund that? And fortunately NDIS is here and that's taken a lot of that burden, but it wasn't always here. And no. and will it always be here? Like who knows? who knows? And so yeah, it's just these things that you People just never think about it. And, and that, that's the worst case. We can never insure for that cost. But if we can get somewhere, then at least it's somewhere. Yeah. Well, I could keep talking to you about insurance all day because I... <laughs> well, it's good that we're doing a three-hour episode on it. So yeah, yeah, three good. hours. Yep. Yeah, that's what that's the amount that you set aside for this podcast. Yeah, that's right. I'm um, not sure if the curious ones did set aside three and a half hours to listen to you talk about insurance. So we might just wrap it up here. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you again, my dear little brother, for coming on the podcast and sharing your expertise. I hope, Curious Ones, you've enjoyed listening to Phil's irreverence and expertise and his obvious passion for insurance. Again, you can check him out at sky with e, dot com dot au, and the link will be in the show notes. And I really, really appreciate you taking the time, Phil, before you jet off to the Philippines, Singapore and the Philippines, to hang out with me. So thank you. No worries. Thanks for having me. Curious Ones will be back in your ear next week with some other interesting topic. Until then, bye.